yeah how it's like oh well, like who buys this stuff like what's the point of this um it's actually factually proven to be a cia psyop and i'm not even joking <laughs> that's all just just wanted to just, put that just out, there. It out of there <laughs> just just some food for thought you could look into it if you want Hello, everybody, and welcome back to episode 36 of the Coconut Curry podcast. On this episode, we are going to discuss the NBA Finals, which just wrapped up with the Boston Celtics defeating the Dallas Mavericks 4-1. I know it's a dark day here for all parties. If you're uh, new around here, we are two Sixers fans and a Knicks fan, so we are struggling right now. Um, We're also going to discuss Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese because they are beefing once again. again. Um, And the media has completely blown it out of proportion (laughs) again. Um, and then we're going to go over the top 10 players in the league um, as the postseason has wrapped up and the NBA season has concluded. But before we do all that, we are three postgraduate students from the University of Pittsburgh. We've got myself, Raj, and Peter all on today in store for a good podcast episode. And we're just chatting in about sports and hopefully offering a fresh new perspective. If you could please like, comment, subscribe, it would help us out a lot. Before we say anything else on this podcast, I wanted to give a huge shout out to the MLB because I saw a stat this weekend that they had the highest attended weekend in MLB since 2008 um, this past weekend, which is super rad and cool. So Mm -hmm. that's minus the postseason. But I just thought it was super cool and like very much shows how baseball has like come back in a strong way with the pitch clock and and things that they've done i was just about to say everybody crying about the pitch clock they're like it's injuring pitchers it's like guys injuries have been up for the past 10 years because we are forcing pitchers to throw a hundred miles an hour on every pitch it's good for the game i swear <laughs> um but great for the sport um we also te- yeah, yeah. we also typically react to comments but there are none to react to so we're going to skip that section for today keep commenting if you have a hot take but please now it's time to hop into our favorite segment of the week disgruntled moment of the week disgruntled meaning dissatisfied or angry we talk about moments in the sports world in our personal lives um, that make ourselves others anybody really disgruntled so raj the reason this segment was created i just read what he called him <laughs> oh my god we'll, we'll be first <sighs> so i hate taiwan walker I don't like him. I he pitched okay against the Orioles, but I I just don't like the dude. He shouldn't. Be, we're paying him all this money just for him to be a Tobias Harris on this team. We have Turnbull, <laughs> who's just waiting for his turn. Turnbull was lights out, like when he was having the start while Taiwan was injured. If anything, I wish Taiwan was out for the whole season. That dude's a liability. He's become an insult to people. I insult people by saying you play like Taiwan Walker. <laughs> He's just not good anymore. He's washed. You're, showing, he's up, you're showing up to LA and, Fitness Open Court just saying, and you play like Taiwan Walker. Yeah, yeah I will. <laughs> That's a hell of disrespectful. Tell us what they play like Taiwan Walker. There was and nothing you know funnier. Sorry to cut you off, Raj, but at no, the uh, the grad party we were at this past weekend, <laughs> we were playing some uh, some drinking games, and Raj pulls out the Taiwan Walker insult, and some dude, we have no idea who this dude was. He might have been 30 years old playing with us. I don't know why this guy was there, but he was like, that is the most insulting thing I have ever heard, and people have <laughs> legitimately questioned my intelligence and whether or not my IQ is above room temperature, and that was the most insulting thing. <laughs> Thing someone <laughs> said to me <laughs> it was so funny yeah, hey, that's a philly faithful for you there you go god anyways uh taiwan um either pick it up and start fighting for your contract bud or your ass is going to be traded and turnbull's taking your spot strong words there you go strong words peter you want to take next <laughs> yes uh so my uh my disgruntled moment of the week is Justin's takes on uh, hockey and the NHL. Um, so for a long time, so I've been a hockey fan for a little while now. Uh, I'm a, a Rangers fan. And uh, these two are Flyers fans. No matter how much Raj tries to insist that he's a Devils fan. He was a Devils fan for Devils one fan. season when they were good, but then flipped back over to the Flyers when the Devils were <laughs> somehow even worse than the Flyers. Um, mm-hmm. And for Tough so long, I kept trying to like, inject some sort of hockey into this podcast and everyone's like no not happening. we don't talk about when there was five of us on this podcast not having it no one's having any of this we talked about soccer i'm like "Eh, whatever hockey absolutely which kind of makes sense soccer is a bigger sport than hockey but anyway 
this dude has the audacity, <laughs> the absolute audacity, to send a text message. I will, I think I have it up. Hang on. Let me read this thing out. It is, here it is. Yep. In the was this in the middle of the finals game when you when you sent no, no, this, this out post finals or was this this was post finals yeah uh, so this was post finals <laughs> this dude oh my god this I hate yesterday, you yesterday right this dude yeah, the, yeah this was yesterday ago, yeah 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 finals were two days ago oh my god I, I damn it I thought I oh I lost it and eh, whatever basically long story short this guy goes wow this Oilers Panthers game is really good yeah, right that's, now that's that's pretty much word for word what I said. Yeah, like the audacity. To, if after you have on hockey for so long, you watch the finals, which arguably I'd say the NHL finals are like a minimum top three final, probably arguing for top one. Yes, thank you. I am just as big as op. Thank you, Raj. <laughs> top one, like final game for any sport. It is amazing to watch hockey. Playoff hockey is incredible. And this dude has been all over hockey for years at this point and you have the audacity to tune into one of the best games and go yeah it's pretty good yeah no i've been saying that for years now that <laughs> was deciding to give it credit it's insane in my defense i hadn't watched games no. one two or three i just knew that the panthers were up 3-0 then me and my dad this weekend we went down to baltimore for the phillies orioles uh two games and we were at a sports bar uh, at the end, and the only thing that was on after the Phillies game was the Stanley Cup. And I was 3 0, and I was like, oh, it'd be really funny if like Edmonton blew them out, like similar how, because they're drawing comparisons between the Celtics and the Mavs series to the Stanley Cup playoffs. So I was Stanley Cup final. So I was like, that'd be funny. We're watching the game. Panthers get absolutely like rocked. Like they, they pulled their keeper in the second. It was 8 1. Yeah, I they, think they pulled the their keeper. It. it was the insane. Panthers pulled their keeper in the uh, second period. It was like ridiculous. Um, mm-hmm. So then yesterday, I was just, you know, scrolling through the TV as one does. And then I was like, oh, this game is on. Let me, let me see what's going on. And I was like, it was 4 3. I was like, oh, wow. Okay. Third period. Cool. We'll watch a little bit. And I was like, ah, oh, this is really good. And then this player from the Panthers made a great save that didn't matter at all because then uh, Connor McGregor. Nick David just like kind of like kicked it right into the goal with his and it was like that. So great series. I'm excited to see. I'm, I'm tuned in for game six. Now can Edmonton make it a set six, oh three, three series game six and bring it back to Florida seven for game seven. Yeah. Like unironically, they could be one of the first teams ever to do a, a reverse sweep in a final, oh, Florida, which is insane. Florida yeah, they're sweating big. Um, yeah, so thank you for finally uh, joining the hockey bandwagon and how interesting it can be. Uh, I can't wait for your takes on the Flyers next year. It's going to be so much fun to listen to you two talk be, about that. There will be no takes it's on never the Flyers. Happen. No it's, takes. it's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. <laughs> um, I was going to talk about the Detroit Pistons, but then we were talking oh, before the podcast, and I'm just going to be honest. I'm disgruntled about Louisiana politics. I don't Raj yeah. said in our group chat earlier. Um, if people did not see this, I wouldn't even consider this a hot take by three liberal college guys. Um, Louisiana decided <laughs> that they should display the Ten Commandments in every single classroom. Um, and just an absolute like disgrace to church state separation to just like people not choosing to be religious. And it's most likely yeah. going to get struck down in the courts. But the fact that they even passed a law like that has me really disgruntled on today so yeah and let me make it abundantly clear i i myself am a christian and this is utterly ridiculous the entire <laughs> yeah like the entire point of the united states is the separation of church and state that's literally why we were founded like that was one of the biggest reasons where it's like freedom of speech and religion were like literally the two things <laughs> like that like it's in the constitution it's in the declaration of independence like it's kind of very important to the united states so it's i don't know it's ridiculous and it's like oh well uh, you should be able to do it yeah you can do it if you're a private school this is like state funded state schools like it's the exact opposite of what you should be doing but it's like it's so louisiana they were also the first state as soon as uh, roe v wade 
got kicked out of law. They, oh, like, yeah. The first state, they were like, oh, yeah, you know what? You just can't get an abortion, no matter what. No exceptions. Yeah. Very, like, on yeah, brand. Done. Yeah. Well, that's Jacob's state. So that's the state yep. he represents. That's his state. That's his fault. Yep. So, so uh, he has to attest so to So I'm that. putting aside my Detroit Pistons disgruntledness today <laughs> because I'm disgruntled <laughs> with the state of politics generally, but just specifically Lovely. in this case with Louisiana politics. So. Wait, sorry, side note. Um, have you guys seen that trend on TikTok where it's like, um, God, it, it's like me in 2028 on like the beaches of Taiwan <laughs> after I just got shot and like the last memory that comes to me, it's some like nostalgic thing or it's like me in the Battle of Moscow <laughs> in like 2032 or something like that. It's like we're joking about this now, but like le legitimate possibility there that World War Three could pop off at any moment. Hey, uh, Putin's visiting uh, Kim over in North Korea. So, um, oh, don't oh, thank God. So, oh. Anything's possible. That if you, if the podcast goes away for about like I don't know a year, it's could a, you imagine how hilarious that would be? It's like we don't post for a long time, and then it's just like all of us at different fatigues, and it's like yeah, so we all got drafted. Uh, <laughs> one of us has like an amputation. <laughs> yeah, one of us. Yeah, has Justin and bringing in our. Yeah, Justin and Raj are both uh, in a base in Germany right now as doctors, and I'm currently on the front lines of, of Kiev as so an army <laughs> medic. <laughs> Sup, guys? At least we'd all be medics. We wouldn't actually be, like, fighting. That is true, yeah. We're, we're valuable in that sense. Yeah. Our secret it's all fun games to get shelled by a bomb. <laughs> that's the, that's the, yeah, it's, it's all fun of games until the, until, uh, the tactical until, nuclear warheads start heading your way. <laughs> Until Russia decides that medics aren't off limits. Uh, yeah. Just... War crimes? I've never heard of them. <laughs> the Geneva Conventions? <laughs> never What's heard that? of her. I thought that was uh, a checklist. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, aside from that, that's the disgruntled moment of the week. <laughs> our favorite segment. A blast as always. But now we're going to hop in to the finals. Um, the NBA season for 2023-2024 wrapped up on Monday with the Boston Celtics winning championship number 18, beating the Dallas Mavericks 4-1. to Jalen Brown gets the final MVP. As we mentioned on the start of the podcast, not a good day for us because two Sixers fan, one Knicks fan. But all in all, the Celtics were the front runners to begin the year. They were the odds on favor to win the championship. There was never a doubt. They had the best record in the Eastern Conference by a mile, had a dominant play playoff run where they only lost three games. And... That's that's all I really have to say. They were they were dominant from start to finish, and yeah. honestly, they, they were the rightful winners of the championship, whether or not um, I'm happy about it. Yeah, I mean, it's not really a, a whole lot to really say because, like, initially, it was like there was some thought of like, oh, could the Mavs' offense be so good that they'll be able to to really overcome the Celtics' good defense and like shoot them out the gym? Didn't happen. Nope. Never really came nope. close. One game because I guarantee that the Celtics were just like, yeah, we'll lose this game. We'll take it back and win it in Boston. Why not? Because they could just screw around. They were winning by like 20 points in like every single game at one point. Like it's, again, I hate the Celtics with all of my heart, but it is kind of cool to see. It's like, look, this team has been good for a little while. They went all in this year. They're a very team-centered basketball team. They're not like... Because, of course, the chirp is always, well, Jason Tatum's not that good. Well, it's like, yeah, this doesn't have to be. And, like, that's kind of good for basketball because it's like, it's not just superstars doing their thing. It's like, yeah, this is a team. Like, they all work well together. Like, that's the point. Um, but, yeah, so good for basketball, bad for everybody else. <laughs> yeah. And, Peter, you mentioned just the point differential. Um, they won game one by 18, won game two by seven. It was more. It was 20 late, and the Mavericks had a crazy run back, so it wasn't never, never mm -hmm. felt that close. Um, Boston wins by seven in game three. They lose by 38 in game four, where they weren't trying. And then in game five, they came back and won by 18. So 18-7-7-18 eighteen, seven, seven, 18 for their margin of victory. Just not, not a super not competitive close. series yeah. in, in that front. Um, and yeah, I, I, I like what you said. Like, I love the chirp, the Celtics as much as anyone, but like, there's a lot of pressure on a team when you have the pressure on you starting from day one. Um, we just watched a team in the Nuggets where everyone kind of thought the Nuggets last year 
um, where a team that could go on to win this year's championship and maybe start a run of multiple mm-hmm. champions. I think people forget we haven't had back-to-back champions since the Warriors did it with KD. It's been a revolving door. So, like, the Boston Celtics were the team – not the Boston Celtics. The Denver Nuggets were thought, thought to be the team that could do it and get, went back-to-back and kind of start that, like, oh, are you a potential dynasty? No, they got bounced in the second round. They didn't even make it to the conference finals, nonetheless, the NBA finals. So it's never easy – no matter what, between injuries, between ebbs and flows, between bad matchups, it's never easy to be the team that goes through all the way. Um, so I think hats off to like um, Brad Stevens, the GM, for putting that team together. Um, obviously, mm-hmm. he goes from the coaching role up to the desk and makes he trades for Drew. I think people, for, I think people forget and take for granted how this team came together. I think people think like, oh, they just had all these players. Like going into the year, they had Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, and they had Al Horford. But they didn't have Drew Holiday. They didn't have um, Kristaps Porzingis. And some of their bench guys were the same. But those were guys that they brought in key parts of their team. They obviously had Derek White because they traded for him a year or two ago. Um, But Drew Holiday and Kristaps Porzingis are key reasons why the team got to where they were going. This year, obviously, Kristaps had a rough postseason with injuries, um, but was vital in game one of of the series. And Mm -hmm. like, I don't think they – I think they might win the championship with – without Drew Holiday and, and had Marcus Martin said, I think it's probably a seven-game series. They don't have Drew Holiday. I think um, it's a lot closer without Holiday, absolutely. Yeah. And that's a guy that they traded for after he got traded to um, the Blazers, and people thought they might have given up a lot for him at the time, and they just kept going for it. And Joe Missoula being the youngest coach uh, since Bill Russell to win an NBA title is, is, is huge. So mm-hmm. all sides around, I think. I'm just I'm happy for a lot of the people. I'm not help, happy for Celtics fans. I'm not happy for the organization, but I'm happy <laughs> for a lot of the players on the Celtics. Um, yeah. Jason Tatum being a guy who I love to give Chase, Jason his like a hard time for everyone saying he's 19. Um, we're going to get into our players list. I like he's not like an alpha take over the game consistent performer, which I struggle with, but he's gotten a lot of crap and he's been really good. Jalen Brown, there was the conversation about could this duo play together? I mean, I've, everyone remembers going to last year. It was like, are they going to trade Jalen, sign and trade him? Um, they're going to break up the Jays. They never did it. Um, they win. Drew Holiday, if anybody knows anything about Drew Holiday and his family and what he stands for, um, they're like one of the most easily rootable players to like to cheer for. Um, yeah. And just guys like down the board, Derek White, even Chris Tapps Porzingis getting a ring is super cool. And um although raj hates al horford i <laughs> he horford, hates him with all his heart al horford played in 186 career playoff games before winning an nba title and so That's it was really nuts it was it's the most of all time it, so it was really cool to see him get the host up the trophy um yeah and he means a lot for the D- dominican republic fan base um they were oh, flying yeah. the flags after the game and everything like that so i just thought that was super cool so um Raj, what are your? I think I feel like you're going to be a lot more cynical on uh, the Celtics winning the title than both Peter and I are. Yeah, uh, this is a terrible day for the NBA in general. Um, <laughs> Celtics winning is this has just been a terrible year. First, what the Celtics win, the uh, Chiefs win the Super Bowl. What was the other team that shouldn't have? Um, what was their names? Like the obvious, like just the obvious favorites have been winning. Like I just wanted to see something different. Well, don't worry, we had baseball where the Rangers won, except it was at the cost of the Phillies falling apart in Game Six and Game Seven. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Just watch the Dodgers are going to win this year, and it's just going to be the favorites winning every goddamn. Uh, it'll be the Yankees. Please. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was like an okay finals. Like every time I was watching, I'm like, the Mavs can't compete with these guys. Yeah. Yeah. Like every game I watch, it was like. Then again, I was also watching Twitter for the stupid Chipotle Bowl offers. <laughs> oh yeah. So I was a little, I was feeding off those, but I mean, yeah, I mean, hopefully next season is a little more competitive. Like the West basically like killed each other, and then the Celtics were like having a stroll through like a flower field going through the East. So <sighs> can't believe I have to see Celtics fans happy. Yeah, it's tough. Did you guys see that they're flying? They flew down to Miami at noon the day afterwards to go party in Miami. But yeah. they wrote on their board a flight to Miami at noon, which is exactly yeah. what Miami wrote on their board when they played Boston in game five when it was like a 3-1 series. 
Jesus they were like, Christ. I was going to say this in my disgruntled moment of the week last week, and I forgot. I'm always disgruntled. Like, everyone keeps doing this thing where, like, the coach will say, we told our players to pack their bags, like, in an elimination game because they're going to go back home or they're going to go on the road. <laughs> and every time it happens, like, a new like ESPN or someone goes with it, and they're like, after game four was a big thing where Jason Kidd was like, yeah, I told my team to have their bags packed because we were going back to Boston. Everyone's like, yeah, I love that mentality, not giving up on the game. I'm like, these are professional athletes. Like, of number one, of course, they're going to pack their bags because if they win the game, they're just going to be on the next flight out. Like, there's no time to hang out and pack your bag anyway. Number two, if you don't actually think you have a shot to win the game, then you might as well not be playing. Might as well not go in the game. Yeah. If, you're, if you're a Dallas Maverick and you were like, there's no need to pack our bags for game four because there's a 0% chance we're going to win and go back <laughs> to Boston, then you might as well not show up. Like, this, yeah. like I, they've been doing this for years. It was like, very classic with the Miami Heat. Um, they would do the reverse sometimes where, like, when they were on their 2020 run and their run last year. Last year? Yeah. Um, and their run last year, they would be like, oh, well, we didn't even pack to go back on the road because we knew we'd close the game. It's like, all right. Like, I'm, I'm over, like, I'm over teams doing that. Yeah. Well, because then you you have you have teams like that, and then you have the Boston Celtics with their head coach, and he'll just drop like the most insightful, like thoughtful quotes during like some random interview, like not even about like anything that's relevant. And it's like, oh, I could see how players want to play for this guy because he's not like because it could sound a little bit corny, which is I think kind of like the issue with like the oh go pack your bags. I think it's just because like that's so popular at this point. It's like it, stop saying that. But then this dude, it'll be like just some random interview and like some guy asks him, it's like, oh, well, like, how do you overcome adversity? And he's like, well, you know, you like you just got to pick yourself up through the mud and then dust yourself off. Like, st- like, start like yeah. I can't even think of something off the top of my head because I'm not great at that. But you Jaylen can look Hurts up level. these some of these. Yes, absolutely. Jalen Hurts level of like deep, thoughtful quotes that he's like a borderline doing like a sermon where he's like a preacher just like talking to everybody. It's like, yeah, that's the kind of stuff that can actually get professional athletes fired up. Not like, oh, don't pack your bags. It's like, yeah, obviously I want to play like yeah. no duh. <laughs> like imagine I just could not imagine if uh, like what the Dallas Mavericks if they like after the game they won and everyone was like oh coach I'm not gonna be all ready to get on this flight until tomorrow because like I didn't pack any bags it's like yeah why did no like, one I, has ever said that once like no. ever that's never happened no it's like it's like everyone would pack their bag like you wouldn't not also side bag. note someone probably packs their bags for them let's be very clear here yes. like this is an NBA team I'm guessing that that happens well, that's like why when Miami wrote on their board, like, oh, flight back to Miami at noon when they're trying to like build up hype before yeah. their, their game five. It was like, of course, you have to have the flight booked. Like, it's a flight. <laughs> yeah. Like, everyone has their flight booked. And that like, like Miami was like, oh, we'll wait until we win the game. No, it's nighttime. Then you can't book a flight. <laughs> like, that's not how flights work. Even Listen, if you're you flying gotta, private, that's not how they work. You got to reserve the airspace. You got to make sure you get like go off the, the runway. Like, no, you yeah. have to have the flight booked and you can cancel it if you lost. Exactly. And, if you, and even if you did lose, you still got to go back home to Miami. So your <laughs> flight is still booked. Um, anyway, it just drives me up the wall every time I see, it happens every year. Like every, every year, year, there's a story about a team in an elimination game being like, "Oh yeah, we weren't, we knew we weren't gonna lose." And it's like, all right. Um, but I, it's just funny that uh, Boston did that on the flip side. Um, I did yeah. want to give a shout out real quick to Jason Tatum because Jason Tatum did not win Finals MVP. I thought he should have won a Finals MVP. Um, and obviously, there's a lot to be said about his shooting performance in in the NBA Finals. But I thought as a playmaker, as a defend defender as somebody who was getting the really bad defensive uh matchups like they were sending everything they could at jason tatum a lot of double teams hence his high assist numbers i thought he had a really good nba finals besides putting the ball inside the basketball hoop (laughs) and um i don't mean that as slander i mean that as he got the job done even when his shot wasn't going down so i give him a lot of credit for that but he does drive me up the wall because he takes some of the dumbest shots i've ever seen dude some of those shots were it was like he would be like contested three and it's like why why are you well, trying to force this well like i thought jason Tatum was playing really good so i was kind of rooting for him in game five to like have a really good performance and yeah. so it'd be like wow like jason really like you know in the elimination game showed up shot 60 percent from the field mm-hmm. like you know just dominated i'd be like he had one finals mvp because i thought he deserved it. i wanted to see him like 
prove people wrong a little bit. But then he like he so he gets a fifty percent shooting. He's doing great. He's got a ton of points. Then at the end of the game, he kind of just starts like chucking up dumb shots. He's doing a step back three. He's like he's trying to, st- to he's trying to pad his stats to really get yeah, the finals he's, MVP. He's, it was so he's bad. Com- he's completely out of control. All of a sudden, his shooting plummets to like forty percent. So then he's got like thirty points on forty percent shooting. I was like, Jason, if you just like stop <laughs> trying and got a few more assists, maybe an easy bucket here or there, you would have finished with thirty five eight and eight or something and then you would have been on 50 percent to 60 percent shooting everyone would have been like that is an all-time like closeout game from jason tatum but no he like shot a bunch of dumb shots um and i'm sure he doesn't really care that much but i was like you could have yeah. you, you seriously could have like taken this finals mvp from jalen brown because people will be like oh jalen he had a great defensive series on luca no doubt but jalen brown had averaged two less points than Jason, two less rebounds, two less assists, um, and he shot 6% better from the field. So it's not as if like Jalen was just miles above better than Jason. So I just thought it was funny mm-hmm. that he just kept taking these dumb shots. Because he's literally like, you'll be like, wow, he made a couple of nice shots. And then all of a sudden, he's like 32 <laughs> feet away, like stepping yeah. back, like in t- contested coverage. And I'm like, what are you doing? Like, I think, I, I genuinely think that that kind of, that idea encapsulates why everybody hates on jason tatum Mm -hmm. it's literally not for him as a player it's for him as all the weird (laughs) that he does (laughs) like we're gonna we're probably gonna get into it and i kind of want to just get into it at this point but like after they win he tries to recreate like the kevin garnett like (laughs) we did it it's like brother that is not the same situation to be saying that at all he because someone broke it down he he recreated the Kevin Garnett thing. He quoted Steph Curry. It's yep. like, well, what are they going to say now? He tried to recreate the Kobe photo. It's like, dude, do your own thing. Stop trying to copy everybody. Like, come on. I th- it's I just think, so annoying. I think he just, this is why I didn't want him to win. <laughs> it's just so, it's like, dude, you are an amazing basketball player. And I totally understand having idols, players that you have looked up to, but Jesus Christ, be your own person. Like, there's the one shot of him holding up Deuce Tatum. That is going to be his iconic shot, like the iconic moment for him. That's going to be it. Not the, we did it. It's like, no, that sounds cringe and forced. Like, that's weird. That's not you. Like, you are, like, he is known for having this kid that's always on the sidelines with him. Like, that's his thing. And it's like when you see him being lifted up into the air with the confetti falling down in Boston, like, that is the iconic moment. It's not going to be you holding the trophy trying to pretend to be Kobe. Like, stop it. I, I like how you said that. Uh, that because I thought the picture of uh, him and Deuce was super awesome. Like I thought that was like if you were a Celtics fan, like I would frame the picture and put it in my like my house. Exactly, or like, exactly. Like, I, like if I was Jason, I'd make that my pro. Like I think it's like a really cool picture that encapsulates like winning the championship and your family's there with you. Um, and like you said, he's known for having this kid. He's always there. Everyone knows Deuce. Um, and like he has like the kid like, and then he just like goes back and you could tell like. When Lisa Saunders, uh, who um, was doing the post game press conference with Jason, like he took a minute to come back from the mic to do the Kevin Garnett. It wasn't like it was a spur of the moment where you're like, wow, he really just like felt that we did. I was like, he like thought about this beforehand. He was like, wait, hold on. And then came up. Yeah. We did it. Stop it. Stop it. Like the raw emotion, like Kevin Garnett, you you could tell, like, um, there, Cleveland. This was for you. Yes, like the, dude. I, if someone said, if he said Boston, this was for you, I think there might have been booze. <laughs> like, yeah, I was gonna say there would have been a riot. <laughs> they would have brought. They would have brought out the torches and they the forks and. <laughs> oh yeah, we know Boston fans. They yeah. would have been itching to bring those pitchforks <laughs> and torches out. Right out of their closet. Um, oh yeah. But yeah, I agree. Like a little bit, he gets a lot of hate for being corny. Like ev- everyone saw the corniness coming. It was the most. It was it was locked and weekend. loaded. Everyone's like, "When is it going to show up?" And it happened immediately. It was like, "Oh god damn it!" <laughs> yeah, um, I am very happy for Jalen Brown to also win the Finals MVP um, mm-hmm. because the conversation he's expressed this before. The conversation was really never 
should we get rid of Jason Tatum? It was always like, should, it was, we, should we get Jaylen rid of Brown? Brown? Yeah. Because everyone knows J- Jason Tatum is a little much better player than Jalen Brown. Um, he gets a lot of different coverages. Everyone knows that. Um, people like to make a narrative about it, but it, it's just anybody who knows basketball knows Jason's a better basketball player. Um, so it was always like, should we get rid of Jalen Brown? And he was always in the trade discussions and he got the biggest uh, contract in NBA history this off season. And he was off, obviously drafted before Jason. And so you have this whole, this whole narrative created here about Jalen Brown might be the guy who needs to go. And then he goes out and wins finals MVP. And there's no more conversations without breaking them up. The conversation now turns to, can they do it again next year? Yeah, true. Like, can they bring back to back titles to Boston? And I just think that as a as a narrative for the league and as a narrative for a guy who has just dealt with the worst type of media criticism. Um, there's been racism from Boston fans. He's <laughs> dealt with and expressed that like discontent with. Um, he's dealt with trade rumors, um, maybe not being resigned. His contract's too big, doesn't have a left hand, all this type of stuff. Um, and he goes out and in the biggest game of the year, he's defending Luca, who's a generational talent offensively. Yeah and it's doing a good job on him. And you can see in the mic'd up clips, he's telling Joe Missoula, he's like, if Luca's in the game, I want to be in on Luca. Yeah. He's um, like, give me Luca. I, I, really, I like, I want this matchup. Love yeah. It. I mean, I think it's the reason ultimately he wins finals MVP is because he was a primary defender for Luca, um, which is saying a lot. It's like kind of Andre Iguodala comp from uh, 2015. Where yeah. Kind of. I could see held that. LeBron to 30, 30, oh, and seven. God. And seven. <laughs> On sixty percent shooting and won the finals MVP for his defense on LeBron. Dude, that was, that was so so funny, dude. Oh my god. If Jesus. I was Steph, I'd be pissed. Like it's not yeah, it's about the chip at the end of the day, but like when your teammate actually doesn't stop LeBron and <laughs> the finals MVP finals. for Steph. Like, guys, you don't understand. He played such good defense on LeBron. He held him to five less points per game. He averaged thirty. <laughs> like, like he cooked you. Um I'm going to look at a stat real quick just because I don't want to uh, get yeah. it wrong. And it's kind of a similar thing here, even with that, because, like, Luca still averaged, like, 30 points per game. <laughs> so he was still cooking, even though Dallas looked terrible this entire series. But, yeah, yeah, I totally see that. And it's – it's I, I really do like that Jalen Brown did win this, uh, both finals MVP and the finals in general. Because there was also like a like a lot of talk about like how overpaid he was, and of course, granted, I was one of those people saying that. I want to make this very clear that he didn't have a left hand because it was very very funny. But at this point, it's like okay, now these people can chirp online as much as they want that he doesn't have a left hand. Now he's got a ring, a Finals MVP, and is the highest paid player in NBA history. <laughs> I, okay, I will say LeBron did only shoot 40% for that series. Um, I would like to make it clear that he also didn't have Kyrie and Kevin Love that series. So he really was the only person responsible for creating for his team. Yeah, could you name his second third- player <laughs> that's on that team? It was it was Matthew Della <laughs> um, Oh my God, bro. <laughs> um, He averaged that series 36, 13, and 9. <laughs> <laughs> it's so unreal. while he didn't while he didn't, while he didn't shoot well um the guy the guy got M- finals mvp for uh holding lebron to 30 to nearly a 35 point triple nine. double oh my god yep well they could just send doubles because <laughs> whatever anyway this, I is, just... this is not a lebron podcast even though we love our glorious pookie bear king um <laughs> Any any other thoughts on the Boston Celtics? Uh, I guess we can go to the Mavericks a little bit real quick. Um, for for me, for the Dallas Mavericks, um, obviously they had a great season. I don't think a lot of people were taking them to make the finals no, this year. No shot. Thought they would be in playoff contention. They're hoping to have a comeback after a rough season last year. But awesome for this team to get to the finals. It's just very clear that they don't have the top enough talent across the board to contend with the Celtics and truthfully probably they don't have enough talent to contend next year um i'll we'll get into this in a little bit but i think the way playoff series are won these days are a lot more matchup based than they are necessarily skill based like how much talent do you have and i think they rode that wave but i don't want to take credit away from them um luca came into the playoffs on a bad knee against the clippers and weathered the storm until it got a little bit better 
to which he completely took over during the Minnesota Timberwolves series, a team mm-hmm. that took down the defending champions and the Nuggets. And then they got to the finals, and obviously they got cooked. But <laughs> that was in due part because Kyrie caught the b- bad, bad vibes in Boston and couldn't play. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, if you look at the stats, this is, again, this t- sort of Braun 2015 type stuff. Luka led the team with 29, 9, 6, and almost three steals a game. He shot 47%, which is not bad. Um, a little bit bad from bad from the free throw line and bad from three point line. His next leading scorer was Kyrie, who averaged twenty on forty one percent, which is not good. And I would like to mention Kyrie was excellent in game three, which they lost in game four, which boosted those stats. And then game four, like I just like I feel like you could just throw that stat out because uh, Boston wasn't trying. Then you got PJ Washington at ten. Gafford at eight, Derek at seven. Like you just fall off a cliff real quick. Whereas like yeah. Boston, it's like 20, 20, 14, 13, 8, 12 going down. And you're like, oh, wow, these guys really like really deep. So I give Boston a lot of credit. It's great for their fan fan base. Um, you'll get to see another season of Kyrie and Luca, no doubt. Um, I think that's about a lot of interesting narratives in yeah. the West next season. So caps off the Dallas. Um, you're just, as Raj kind of mentioned, I think, or Peter did, like you just, or not as good as the Celtics. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's really all there was to it. It's like Boston was the better team. They handled their business. They won. Mavs, good job even getting to the finals. Nobody thought you could. Just get a better defensive center for next year, please. Raj, any thoughts for your Mavericks in six? (laughs) You know... I spoke him into the finals with my little bracket. I didn't think they'd make it that far. So I said, hey, maybe I can speak into existence the Mavs being the Celtics. But uh, they shouldn't. I just, uh, if the Mavs didn't make it, I wish the Timberwolves or the Nuggets made it someone to give the Celtics some competition. This has been, that was a really boring NBA finals. Yeah, um, I guess we can hop into our thoughts of the NBA season as a whole now because we're kind of starting to inch on it. My thoughts on the NBA season as a whole is injuries are really starting. The league is very deep right now, which is super good. But the problem is these injuries are really starting to pile up. And yeah, it's been happening for a little bit now, but I hate to be that guy. But if we just go through the Eastern Conference really quick, um, Boston one and five on a team against the Miami Heat who didn't have Jimmy Butler. Um, the second series, Orlando and Orlando and Cleveland, they were completely healthy. And then you had Indiana and Milwaukee, which Milwaukee had, had a defending had a champion on their team at Giannis, one of the best players in the league. Both him and Dame eventually got hurt. So that that series was injury. Then you had Knicks and Sixers, which both it was a great series. Everyone acknowledges that, but both teams were hurt. So mm-hmm. you weren't even getting the best product out of both teams. Then the Knicks and the Pacers play. The Knicks are completely hurt. Mm-hmm. Um, Pacers were healthy. They advance. Then you get Boston, Cleveland. Um, Donovan Mitchell gets hurt. <laughs> then you get into the f- there. And then Tyrese Halliburton gets hurt. Yeah. So, um, obviously, the Tyrese didn't get hurt until the end of the series and, and everything like that. But a ton of injuries. The Western Conference, not so much with the injuries. Um, but that kind of defined the Eastern bracket. I think people are really like giving the Eastern conference a hard time. And I don't really think it's deserved. Like, I think if you had Miami healthy, Boston healthy, I don't love Miami. I'll still give them credit for that. Miami healthy, Boston healthy, the Bucks healthy, the Sixers healthy, the Knicks healthy. I think it has five teams right there that you're like, they're really good. Yeah. And like, it'd be really interesting. And there's to be some interesting stuff next year in the Eastern conference. So I think, People are kind of just writing off the East as not being good. Like a Celtics Buck series, Dame Giannis versus Jalen and Jason, that series would have hit like crack. Yeah, that really would have. Mm-hmm. But alas, so, we got the Pacers with a zesty white boy as their number one option. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then for the Western Conference, obviously a bloodbath. Um, this is where my take comes in for the like the Western for the uh, matchup portion of it. I watched the Nuggets lose to the Timberwolves, who felt specifically de- this, uh, specifically designed to beat them with their tall front court yeah. and, and perimeter players. Like it was like, oh, Rudy Gobert and Cat can stop Jokic. So yeah, like two centers on the court. That's the only way you stop them. And then they got into the Mavericks, which 
they were all offense and oh we have really lanky uh rim protectors that can handle rudy and cat and they were like uh-oh because they i mean people forget that the timberwolves lost in five yeah like the timberwolves got cooked by the mavericks um because it was a good matchup like luca they had no one to guard luca the timberwolves and then the mavericks could easily just like with flank lengthy young front court players take care of business so all like just completely match up based in my opinion mm-hmm. i think that's like but i think that's the league we're heading in now it's like how many matchups can you can, can you, you cover yeah. with your team um like you have less margin for error that way mm-hmm. unfortunately for the nuggets i think they ran into the one team like i i still contend that the nuggets would have won the championship this year if they, did, if they didn't the run into that yeah. timberwolves team um i still think if they play the timberwolves a hundred times they win 70 80 of them but like they didn't yeah and that's that's how you either win or you don't win so that's my thought on the nba season i it was a good i thought it was a pretty good season i think people forget like yeah. early season joel Embiid was cooking everybody um and on his way to an easy mvp obviously gets hurt but that was really interesting and then you had the whole bucks drama all year the celtics <laughs> were the great the best team in the, in the league um in the western conference was a bloodbath throughout victor it was a good so there i thought it was a really good basketball yeah. season and yeah. I think the finals were a little bit of a letdown for what people wanted to, but I think we're going to kind of have to get comfortable with the fact that if injuries keep happening at the rate that they're happening, yeah, this is this is more likely what's going to happen than like the days of having LeBron and the play the Warriors is over. Like LeBron is thirty, almost forty years old, and there's no KD Steph Warriors anymore. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's just going to – really, it's going to be the best team that is also the healthiest is going to win, period. Like, that's just yep. how it's going to work. Yeah, and that's – I think people forget how a lot of championships have worked in the past. Like, the Lakers, after they won their title in 2020 in the bubble, LeBron was hurt that next season, so they didn't make a title run. And, like, you forget that a couple years later. Like, we will forget – in a few years, the Celtics won the 2024 championship, mm-hmm. and they went through a weaker Eastern Conference. Like that'll be something that uh, skips our mind. People often forget the Raptors when they won the championship um, in 2019. Both KD popped his Achilles and Clay got hurt, yeah, which is like p- part of the reason that they won. You forget that kind of stuff. Um, we only remember that Kawhi was excellent, but just just a thought. Like that's we're never going to have, I think a fully healthy playoff yeah. run. I hope we do. Like I, I really do. Like, I would love to see an iconic playoff run next year. I think we're set up for one, but I'm also not confident that in the Eastern conference, Giannis, Dame, Joel, the Knicks all stay players. Healthy, yeah. yeah. And like, I hate to say that, but like J- Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown have been very healthy throughout their career. If one of them goes down and then it's wide open. Mm-hmm. So what are your guys thoughts on the NBA season? Like I said from this jump, it, the NBA is a comedy. <laughs> Nothing that happens in the NBA is real. We got Jason Tatum over here doing the cringiest stuff I've ever seen with the trophy. Um, what what else? We got the whole gambling thing with oh, John yeah. Porter. Yeah, the John Tate Porter. Gambling. Free my man. He did nothing wrong. <laughs> That's just me. Uh, what other? We had the whole Bucks and oh Eastern during the, the in like, in the season tournament, yeah. Game ball gate. We had that. Uh, what other stuff happened this well, season? Actually, I want to circle back to the Jonte Porter while we're doing a trip down memory lane, real quick. Um, <laughs> to be, he was betting the unders on himself, which meant he was not confident he could go into a game and like score. Like he could have gone into games and been like, "Oh, I'm going to be the mo- ba- main ball creator and just try to score points." He was betting the under on himself and then pulling himself out of game. Like that's crazy. Like, like. Someone needs to see him to like get more confident. Like he needs to see a therapist to get like more well, confident in his game. Like, brother, he ain't under- playing well, in the NBA ever again. <laughs> well, well, like I'm banned. He's, he's joining oh, nice yeah. the big three league. Oh, oh my god! god. Oh, oh Draymond, the whole Draymond being thing? an actual yeah. menace to society. Did we? Did, uh, don't, did we talk about the whole? No, I was gonna say. Did we talk about the whole Draymond on TNT thing with no. the rules. I don't think we did. I don't think we so. Recorded that week. Um, Jay- Draymond, like pretty much Anthony Edwards refused to do interviews with inside the NBA with TNT because Draymond was like one of the guests and just spent the entire time making fun of Rudy yeah. Gobert and Cat. So instead of being an actual analyst and like contributing to the conversation, he just roasted players he doesn't like. 
And then so Anthony Edwards is like, I'm not going to talk yeah. to your broadcast. And then TNT was upset because they couldn't get the one of the best players in the league to like talk to them after a game. But he was like, you're yeah. one of my teammates. Draymond just cannot help being a menace. Like he's just going to do it. Like whether like I don't even think he realizes he's doing it half the time where he's like, what do you what do you mean? Why are you not going to come on? It's like, dude, you just said that my teammate was a French idiot. Like, obviously, I'm not going to come on yeah. and said, like, talk to you. Um. Also, Julius Randall showed up on oh, the ESPN yeah. uh, broadcast, ABC broadcast for the finals, contributed Mouth. absolutely nothing. Randall contributed nothing to the yep. broadcast. Every time, like, Bobby Marks and, like, Stephen A were just talking about how, like, people were injured. And then they're, like, looking over at Julius, and he's like, yeah, I was injured. And then <laughs> they were like, well... And they're like, well, maybe the Celtics will repeat next year. And Julius is like, well, I hope they don't. <laughs> um, and, and Jesus, then, Randall. And they were like, well, they were like, well, a team hasn't repeated in like a bunch of years. And he was like, well, I'm going to try to make sure that doesn't happen. <laughs> like he was just sitting there, pretty much being like, yeah, like I, I don't want the Celtics to be good next year. And I'm not. It's like you're giving them. zero insight into the game whatsoever. It's like, thanks, man. Why are you here? <laughs> Because even because even if you had a Western Conference player, you could like make the like, but like no, Joel Embiid was also on the broadcast and like said on the thing that he hated the Celtics because yeah. like, they they're choosing bad people to go on the yeah the broadcast. They're choosing people that play the Celtics all the time, get their ass kicked by the Celtics, and then they're like, what do "Hey, you do you want to compliment like, the Celtics?" Like, yeah, no. I don't want to talk <laughs> like, about the Celtics. And if you're Julius, you're not going to be like, "Oh, you're not going to like st- start like loving up the Jason Tatum because then you have to go defend him next year." <laughs> yeah. So oh my god! I, I thought Julius Randall was completely useless. I was like, I was like, man, just get him off the broadcast. Like, <laughs> what are we doing here? Like, just, just you're let this man talking. go. You're like, oh yeah, the Celtics had a great run in the playoffs. You're like talking to the guy who may have made a difference for the Knicks. <laughs> yeah, literally, and, like had a competitive. Like, it's like, okay, come on. Like, what are we doing? This is ridiculous. Man, I was, you got good memory. You're bringing us through memory lane on this season. Yeah. I'm trying to think what else um, happened. This I mean, Tyrese Halliburton was a season. god for half the season. Yeah. That's true, yeah. Um, uh, oh, well, you had the uh, like the fun JV team, Thunder. They were good. Yep. Uh, uh, you had the Detroit Pistons who on, went on an all-time losing streak. Oh, that's right. Yeah, wasn't it like a 28-game losing happen. streak? Yep, and then the Wiz- 26 or 28, and then the Wizards promptly were below them in the standings at one point in the season, and no one talked about it. Yep. And we did a whole podcast episode on how bad the Wizards were. Yep. Um. Yeah, I can't think of anything else right now. Yeah. Uh, but either way, it was. I thought it was a fun NBA season as always. Yep, Raj is right. It is a comedy show. Things happen. All there's something's gonna happen off. The yeah. Season. That's gonna be super goofy. Um, we've already got Pascal Siakam getting 50, 46 million a year. Uh, Monty Williams getting fired. Oh and getting yeah. Getting paid like sixty five million on his contract. So. Um, it's always the fun thing about the NBA is there's always going to be drama. It doesn't matter what time of year. There's about like a couple month period of time where there's not drama happening. Yeah, it it really is just a soap opera at this point. Like, I and it's awesome to tune into every year, and I genuinely can't wait because next year is going to be yet another good year. So, I I miss basketball already. <laughs> Okay, that's enough about the NBA. We're going to take a quick break from the NBA, and we'll circle back to it in a minute. But we're going to break it up with everyone's favorite topic, the most toxic topic on sports right now, Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese. Um, so if you were not aware, people listening, on Sunday, the Sky played the fever, and Angel Reese hit Caitlin, Caitlin Clark on the head while she was driving to the basket. It got called a common foul on the floor. They reviewed it, upgraded it to a flagrant one. Um, if you look at the video, I'm not even being biased. It was a flagrant one foul. Kaylin went up. Angel didn't like try to like be dirty, but she hit her on the head. If you hit a basketball player on the head, it's a flagrant one foul. It's like in the rule book. She was slightly out of control. No, and it's like Angel didn't get ejected or anything. Just a flagrant one foul. Cool. You do all you do is get two free throws, two free throws, and the ball back. Yeah. Um, like not a big deal. Um, well, it would have been three three free throws because the technical, but like it's just it's not a big deal. Post game. They asked Caitlin Clark about it. She says, it's just part of basketball. Angel says, it was a basketball play. I can't control the refs. Little interesting. Then later, she says in the press conference, 
I think we went up really strong a lot of times and we didn't get a lot of calls. And going back and looking at the film, film, I've seen a lot of calls that weren't made. I guess some people got a special whistle. Um, this is, of course, after the first time the sky and the fever played, Kennedy Carter fouled Caitlin Clark unnecessarily. And then Angel was in the background like, yeah, yeah. And then um, Caitlin just said at the end, we're competitors. That's why the game, that's the way this game should be. It's going to get a little feisty. It's going to get physical. But at the end of the day, both teams are just trying to win. And there's been a lot of media coverage on it. And I just wonder, like, what is your guys' thought on the recent ad- recent edition of Caitlin Clark versus Angel Reese? So here's my thing. The, the reason why I think at this point it's blowing up even more so is because of the media attention to it. Like if the media just like let it be whatever, it would just be like, oh, hard foul on Caitlin Clark. What does she have to say about it? And then she's just like, yeah, it's basketball. It's it happens. Part of basketball. And then it's like, okay, anyway, moving on. But then they're trying to make it a much bigger thing than it is. And like it was, mind you, this was on CNN the other day. They were talking about this, about how Angel Reese fouled Caitlin Clark. Fox, Fox, Fox News is talking about it. Too. Fox News running it as well. It's like, why is this happening? This is not political in any way. This is a sport. Like, this is not the worst foul in the world. Like, yes, it was a flagrant one, as you said, Justin, like by definition, by textbook, but it's like, wasn't really that egregious like Caitlin Clark just like got up and was like yeah I got just got fouled whatever but it's the thing that's just frustrating me the most is like it's so obvious that the media is trying to make this a bigger deal for their own personal deals and not giving about the players at all they're like oh yeah I don't care what Caitlin Clark has to say about this I'm gonna make this a bigger issue than it is because I need my news source to be able to do better versus Caitlin Clark. Who's like, I just want to play basketball. I don't care. Like stop making this a bigger deal than it is. Like it's basketball, but you know, that's the media. It's stupid, but whatever. I just think this whole thing's just everything that happens to Caitlin Clark. is blown out of proportion. Like it ain't that deep. Like what these get cold all the time and fouls get upgraded when they shouldn't fouls get downgraded when they shouldn't happens all the time. It's just because it's Caitlin Clark and angel Reese and they know, Oh, we're going to get a hell of clicks on this because we talked about them. Like it's, 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 it's just what happens in this sport. And then what we're going to get a watch yeah. post article about how like Caitlin Clark's an angel and angel Reese is a yeah. heathen. Like, Oh my God. I'm tired of seeing all this stuff about them. Like it's just what happens. Yeah. I have a little di- different take. Um, I don't mind anything that happened on the basketball court, like the flagrant foul, whatever. I think Angel needs to do like a better job at, and there's been a lot of like racial tension with this issue too. Like I'm not even like, I'm not going there. Like simply saying at the end of the day, I guess some people got a special whistle when you flagrantly fouled Caitlin. Yeah. Like you, you need to like have some level of like Angel is coming off slightly across as jealous of Caitlin Clark. Yeah. Um, she mentions why people aren't talking about the other girls in the league um, instead of like Caitlin, which you can, I feel like that's a conversation you could be having behind closed doors, talking to the media about why they don't want to cover a generational basketball player is a little bit strange. People, when LeBron came into the league, people were not covering um, who some bozo at the time. I can't think of anyone. But, yeah, because it, it you know, wouldn't like, even be somebody like uh, the Carmelo Anthony who came in at the same time because he was also really, really good. Like this, it was not the same thing. Yeah, like Angel. Angel's a fine player. Like no, no hate to Angel. Uh, no offensive skill around the basket. <laughs> just to, like just to mention, but um, no finishing ability. Minus like, do you know that K- Angel Reese is nearly shooting the same percentage as Caitlin Clark from the field? Angel plays center. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't she also like 6'8? Yes. Um, (laughs) It's actually like a little bit like it's. I looked at the stats today because I was like making sure that Caitlin Clark was having a better season before I just like said that. Like Caitlin Clark shooting like a tick below her than Angel. And I'm like, Angel, but you're shooting near the basket. Like, (laughs) like those are like statistically. Like that makes sense. It's like why Joel, like that's why like no Derek Lively, like 75% during the Western Conference finals. Yeah, because he takes a lob attempt every single time. Um, (laughs) Anyway, 
But I think I do think Angel needs to come across a little bit more as, and maybe she's doing this because she like wants to embrace the villain arc. She knows she'll get more clicks that way or whatnot. But saying that people are getting a special whistle, like when you hit someone on the head, it's a flagrant like it's a flagrant foul. Like you shouldn't be disagreeing with it after games. If you don't, if you didn't see the replay and you don't know, hey, I didn't look at the I didn't look at the replay yet. From what I saw on the court, I didn't think it deserved a flagrant foul, but I haven't really checked the tape. If you guys want to ask me about it when I get the a chance to review it, um, cool. Like I, I like that Angel said it was a basketball play, but then she's like, I can't control the refs, and I'm just like, yeah. So like, I don't mind whatever happened on the court. Like I agree. Like Caitlin Clark doesn't need us to like go on the media and defend her for getting hit. Like that's part of the game. Um, I just wish that someone maybe was in Angel Reese's corner a little bit more, telling her like, hey, like. Maybe you don't need to like, because what there again, the Washington Post article referred to the LSU people as like, like it was like it had a lot of racial undertones to it. We talked about it on the podcast, mm-hmm. like referring them to them as villains. And like the white team in Iowa took down like the villains of a team that was yeah, like, yeah. Um, majority black. Like, like it's not that narrative, but like I think someone should tell like Angel, like, hey, if you keep like saying these things about Caitlin, like that's fine, but you may be portrayed this way. And people will keep talking about it that way. Yeah. Um, and also, my thing is, is like, it's it's one thing if, it, like, this was not, like, it, obviously, as we, we kept saying, like, yes, it was upgraded to, like, a flagrant one. It wasn't the most egregious thing in the world. But, like, to act like you didn't do anything, essentially, versus, like, oh, like, it was, like, just, like, a oh, like, I fouled out of a game on, like, a kind of a ticky-tack call, whatever. But, like, this was a very obvious foul, and like, and if that's the hill you're gonna die on. Is very is and, a very interesting take. And the and the refs took it to review. It's not like they called a flagrant one on the court and never looked at it. Like, yeah, they went. To, they you fouled her, which is obvious, and you know you. And then you went to the replay, upgraded to a flagrant one, and then you're saying, I guess some people got us got a special whistle. Yeah, I like. Don't know. It, I just like I look at that. I'm like, you need just. I think you need to work on your skills a little bit. The media, just because I would hate for Angel Reese to end her career being remembered for the person who just sounded jealous of Caitlin Clark. Yeah, cause, like, because like she obviously has talent. Like that's the whole thing. It's like she yeah. is a good basketball player. But like, if you're only going to be remembered for your off the court stuff and not the on the court stuff, then it's like, the why are we playing basketball? Like, yep. Like that's 100%. like that's why you're here. Like that's what I want to. That's why everybody's tuning in is to watch you play basketball. Is it isn't to listen to you like get upset after the game? And it's like that's no, what. Like, and it's not like. And I don't want this to sound like I'm saying like, oh, just shut up and dribble. No one cares what you have to say. Like obviously we do care what like she does. Like her opinions on the game. We we care about the opinions of every NBA player. Damn near after every game, but when every single time it's like a clear hard foul on a certain player and that happens and the, the media is like hey why do you keep fouling this player it's like oh well she gets a special whistle it's like no we saw what happened like that's not nor that's why yeah. it's called a flagrant foul like you shouldn't be doing that and it's just like i don't yeah. know it's odd yeah that i just like i I don't think Caitlin wants it to be in the news. And it feels like Angel wants it to be in the news a little bit. Yeah. Based on her comments. I don't um, but yeah, I, I, but I know some people are blowing out proportion, obviously making it political. And I think that's like not where it's at right now. You could argue that bias gets in the way of some things, but oh, yeah. I think ultimately I feel like if another, if like a regular NBA player came out and said this, I'd be like, Oh, like maybe you should check your, check yourself. Like just like if you committed an obvious foul, you know, I probably like, yeah, I'll look at that next time. I shouldn't hit someone on the head. It's like, yeah, I was going for the ball missed. My bad. <laughs> like, yeah, that's it. Maybe, yeah. Maybe I was a little yeah. bit out of control. Did I deserve the flagrant? That's up for the rest of the side, but I'm just glad Caitlin's okay. <laughs> yeah. Just very, very simple. Like, yeah, you could just be like, you could just be like, I, I didn't think it was a flagrant one foul. I, I saw that I got her on the head a little bit. I obviously went over to Caitlin to make sure she was all right. Mm-hmm. Um, um, but at the end of the day, just trying to trying to get a block on the play. <laughs> um, like I just, I, there's so many better ways to approach the mic than like, I can't control the refs. I guess some people get a special whistle. Yeah. It's just like, like, okay, Oh God, like, you're just adding fuel to the fire. Whatever. Um, 
thoughts out to Cameron Brink who tore her ACL today. Second I was literally just about to talk about that. Like speaking of other players that have like other rookies that have been doing very well on the court. She was doing very well this season and God damn, that was a rough, rough <laughs> break. Yeah. And uh, Cameron brings someone who's like doing, I mean, again, she doesn't have like the, the reputation that angel has from college, but She's come in and obviously she's in LA, but like doing a ton of things like for the league, like promoting WNBA. Oh, like yeah. She's with Jimmy Butler, like taking pictures. She was on like Paul other... George's podcast, I think. Yep. Like she's like yep. all over. Al- she, like, I think she met up with Shohei Otani and suddenly he could speak she English yep. when he would, she was there. It's like, huh, it's a little interesting. You needed an interpreter that was gambling for you, but now you could speak English. Hmm. <laughs> Um, but yeah, Cameron Brink, uh, it's sad to see it. Yeah, ACL tear, really tough. And, but hope she comes back healthy and ready for the next season. Yep. All right. Now it's time. Top 10 players in the league. All um, right. <sighs> Jalen Brunson, number one. Put it. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants oh, to start? you think I'm kidding? Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> I'm still joking. Um, yes, let's I'll hear go. it. I swear to God, um, if you have Tobias Harris at one. I have at number one, how do you say this? Oh, Nassis Antetokounmpo. <laughs> now, I think I have, I think I still have yep, Jokic as at one. Why do you feel that way? I mean, you look at him, he's unstoppable. <laughs> yeah. Look still. at him. It's, it's just like, some white guy. <laughs> like, I think he knows how to lead his team. And yes, what happened in the playoffs was unfortunate, but still. I still okay, have I'm glad. I'm glad like, I I also have Jokic at one. Um, I think people have. We'll probably be commentating throughout your list, Raj. Um, but I think people have kind of like saw, got this idea in their head now. It's like, oh, he's not the best player in the league. It's like, all right, calm down. Like he ran into a matchup a team specifically designed to beat him. Um, he was so dominant last year, won the title, and like actually, no one on earth can stop him. Yeah, Joker at one. Good pick. And right. Raj will take your second player in the league. My Cameroonian Pookie Bear, Joel Embiid. Boo! Get out of here. No. I mean, okay. Embiid, okay, everyone shits on him so much. But, like, he was unstoppable until he hurt his knee and then developed half Bell's palsy or something. I think he's better now from that. I still think he's at two. No. Fair? Incorrect. Who do you guys have? Okay. I have Luca too. You have Luca at two. Yes. You still got Jokic at one. Yes, I still have Jokic at okay. one. I have Luca at two. Okay. All right, and beat at two for Raj. What do you got? Three. Three. I have. Oh, Where did my list go? Three. I have uh, Giannis. Okay. And then at. Four, I have... I have Luca at four. Okay. I'll put him there. Five, I unfortunately have Tatum. Okay. As much okay. as I hate him. Um, Six, I have Steph. I still think he's good. Yeah, Just, I um, think... In a, ter- in a terrible situation with Mr. Let me kick everyone in sight <laughs> and, uh, oh, and an elimination game. Dude, that uh, side note that me that uh, video Clay Thompson picking up a phone and saying "ni hao." Dude, that's Have, did did you guys see that he's working out with the Bahamas national team? Oh. I had no idea he had Bahama ties. Like, oh my god, it's him, DeAndre Ayton, and Buddy Heald. I was I had no idea Clay Thompson had ties to the Bahamas. This brother, it's, this brother's oh. cooked. Uh, <laughs> so he's def- def- at five or six. Uh, what number was I at? Brother, we're asking you. <laughs> oh, you were, I had, okay, wait. You were Jokic, Embiid, Giannis, Luka, Steph. Steph, okay. Oh, no, you had Tatum, Steph. No, I had Tatum, Tatum, then Steph. Okay, yeah, Tatum, five, six, Steph. Okay, at seven, I have KD. Okay, okay, you're giving a lot of love to KD. I think KD's still good. I think he's just... that Whatever situation he's in, in... The experiment the basically the Suns. The Suns experiment didn't work. KD got to go. <laughs> Chelsea wants to kill me right now. Bring him to New York. Uh, I have uh, I have Shea next. Okay. Okay. I think Shea's solid still. 
and then what that means i have two more yeah uh, i think i have pookie bear lebron at nine yeah. wait are we talking about for next season or this season for next season Talk, like going yeah. going into next season uh, still brother <laughs> what the yeah. f- that's, that was the entire point of the list that's what i asked at the beginning <laughs> Well, I was more thinking about age for LeBron, and I was like a little bit like eh, putting him there. But I guess I think that's I'll fair. Yeah. I, the fun thing with LeBron is there's no evidence to suggest that like he was a top ten player this year, and there's no evidence to suggest he's just going to like fall off a cliff going into next year. It's a fair point. Like, you're right, you're right. He's, he's, he has been solid for four years, and ever since he won the championship in 2020, it's like, oh, when's LeBron going to be bad? When's LeBron going to be bad? And he's just always good. Yeah, I, there's still that all-time tweet where it's like, oh, LeBron's about to turn 30. His shenanigans won't last for much longer. And it's like he's been playing for like eight years after that. <laughs> and then at 10, I have Anthony Davis. Okay. As long as he's not injured. Wow. Okay. Peter, you want to take a crack at it? Okay. Uh, so I have what? I had Joker and then Luca. Um, I also had Giannis at three. I had Embiid at four. So we basically just switched those two, essentially. You guys are showing a lot more love to Embiid than even I am. Re- Brother, this dude was literally the MVP before he got hurt. I know. I'll get, I'll get all right. to talk about it. All right, all right, all right, all right. Um, I, had, I had Shy at five um because i think going into next season i think he's going to take one of those leaps because he's already kind of proven to be one of the superstars he's really consistent as a superstar that's kind of my my big thing um i think he's going to be even better next year because that team is so young they're only going to get better uh then i have jason tatum at six um yeah he's good who would have thought uh, then I have at number seven, this is going to be a little bit of a hot take. I think Anthony Edwards is going to be number seven. Um, obviously this year he was pretty inconsistent, um, uh, with how good he was. Obviously he's only like 22 years old. He's very, very young, but I think going in, yeah, don't ever say that to me again. <laughs> That's terrifying. Um, <laughs> he has shown those flashes of being incredible i think he's just going to be more consistent next year and if he is more consistent he's going to be one of the top 10 players in the league and he's mj's son so it's hard to keep him out of the top 10 uh then i have jalen brunson i think he's going to continue on his stretch of being absolutely incredible for the new york knicks um I, I, I think he's going to get even better this next year. I think they're going to add some some more shooting around him, so he's not just going to be the sole offensive option, which is going to make him, I think, look better overall as a player because that's actually what made his good his his game good uh, in Dallas because he wasn't just a shooter. Um, but then he's kind of like we've almost seen like both halves of his game, but just not combined. Uh, because we've seen how much of like a shooting potential he has in New York. But then when he was on Dallas, he wasn't the number one option. He was a much better passing guard. So I think we'll be able to see kind of both of those next year. Then at number nine, I think going into the next year, I think Wemby is going to be a top 10 player next year. But you're saying, are you saying right now he is? Right now, I think this guy going into next season is going to be the ninth best player. Okay. I'm I will die on that hill. This dude should have been defensive player of the year. He is. No, he shouldn't have. Yes, he should have. Don't. Uh, you can't give defensive player of the year to a guy who has 18 wins. Brother, what do you want him to do? He wasn't defending to win games. That clearly wasn't the case. Oh, oh so sorry. Sorry. I forgot this was a team sport. It wasn't. He was like one of the best primary defenders and had the most blocks in the league. I'm not. I'm not doubting that, but you just can't give awards out to guys who who's on teams that oh, blow. My. God, you are the worst. You are the absolute worst. Wemby's a great defender, but I, I like you need to win the game. <laughs> yeah, he can average like a twenty-five point triple double with like borderline ten blocks. What do you want him to do? Well, I'm not blaming. I'm not blaming Wemby for his team being bad. Like that's not the case. But like, I can't be giving out awards <laughs> to guys who are on teams who are uh, not doing anything of consequence. <sighs> Whatever. Anyway. Uh, I get LeBron at 10. Uh, my glorious Pookie Bear is still top 10. Fair. Number one, I have Jokic, of course. Um, yeah. 
multiple time MVP, more MVPs than anyone in the league, won the chip last year, still the best player on the team, no doubt there. Two, I, I still have Giannis at number two. I think people forget uh, he won the title in 2021. He was awesome this year. He averaged 30 points. He's still one of the better defenders in the league. And that's in contrast to my guy at number three, who's Luka, who's better than Giannis offensively. But I think if Luka's 100 offensively and Giannis is a 90, Luka's a 60 defensively and Giannis is a 100. I think he, that's he's such a better defender than Luka. Um, but I, was, I wanted to drop Luka farther, but I just don't because of his defensive performance. But... The guys I have behind him just don't have the pedigree to cook up. So he sticks at number three there. He had a great season, but it is going to take a lot for him. Um, and we can see what he does next year. It's going to take a lot for him to crack the Jokic Giannis for me in the top mm -hmm. there because of how Jokic is a better offensive player than Luka and better defender. And Giannis is close offensively and a much better defender. So it's going to be really hard for him to crack it. But Jokic and Giannis are generational players. And we may we'll talk a little bit more in the off season about it. Like, Jokic and Giannis are going for like top 15 all time type of stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. And some co seasons coming up here, especially if Giannis can get another title. Um, anyway, sidebar. I have Shea at number four. Um, okay. Shea had a fantastic year. Shea, I think Shea is a very underrated defender. Uh, uh, underrated. He's a really good defender. He just, people don't talk about his defense a lot. He averages 30. He's efficient. Um, he, like, Peter, you kind of mentioned he's leading, leading a young Oklahoma City mm -hmm. team. He's going to be even better next year. And I think he's a tick better than number five, at, who I have as Steph. Um, I was glad you guys had him high. I think like Steph still had a really good year, and his team's really struggling. Steph is not a bad defender. He's an okay defender. He's great offensively. I think Shea's a little bit worse offensively, a little bit better defensively. That's why I'm giving him the fourth best player in the league, which I, honestly just for Shea to be considered the fourth best player in the league um, – or within the top 10 is like crazy from where he started. So just like hats off to him right behind Steph. I have Embiid. Um, I still think he offers that top end potential. That's better. But I will say for Steph, Shea, Steph, Shea, Luka, Giannis, Jokic, they've all played better in the playoffs. Um, Shea right. is a player. kind of similar to Embiid where draws a lot of contact to the line, still was able to get it done in the playoffs. Um, the OKC Thunder, Thunder did not, fail because of Shea they failed because they didn't have other talent around him whereas you can argue that the Sixers at times have failed because of uh Embiid so I mean no disrespect to Embiid at six but I think when you have guys that, like I don't I don't feel comfortable putting him in front of Giannis or Luka just because of what they've done in the playoffs and then like Shea Stefan and Embiid I think are in a, a class right there where they're competing but Steph has the pedigree all time and Shea was really just is a fantastic player yeah. um but I, Embiid could also go out win, next year and win the MVP. So we'll see there. Right behind Embiid, I have Tatum. I wanted to put him higher because of the championship run, but just because of his shooting performance, I can't give him there. But I'll give him because he's younger and a, a better defender. LeBron right behind him at eight. I think people forget how good LeBron was in the playoffs this yeah. year. He was um, really good. It, he was really good in the playoffs this year. Still great offensively, still good defensively, which is why I have him a tick above anthony edwards who's at nine for me um anthony edwards a guy who struggles a little more offensively better defender on ball defender than lebron um but doesn't eclipse him yet and number 10 i have kevin durant anthony edwards gets the nod over durant because anthony edwards walked into durant's house took his money yep. kicked him down the stairs <laughs> shot him at gunpoint and sent him packing to cancun so that's my list a close i we know we said top 10 a close 11, I wanted to give a shout out to Jalen Brunson, Jalen Brown, and Anthony Davis. Those are guys for me that are like right on the edge of cracking into the top 10. Brunson, just he's just kicked out because there's a really good players above him. Yeah, and yeah. just because he's maybe still, like, he doesn't have the reputation just because he's such a uh, low draft pick, but mm -hmm. um, a guy that I would keep an eye on for potentially getting up there in the Embiid, Steph, Shea class if he has a really good season next year. Oh, yeah. So that is a top 10 notable admissions that make me very happy. Jimmy Butler. No one mentioned him. That was great because <laughs> everyone, everyone last year wanted to pretend Jimmy Butler was a top 10 guy in the league. And what happened? He <laughs> the bed this year. So that was great. <laughs> um, that whole narrative was dumb and short lived. Um, another guy that's good to miss the list. Kawhi Leonard. Don't show up to play the basketball games and you don't get yeah. to be on the list. Um, I know he's actually injured, but he's always injured. So um he misses the list. Is there anyone else we're missing? Um, 
No, I think that's mostly I it. I think it's a pretty consensus. Yeah. Um, some news outlet did a top 10 player ranking. It was really bad. Um, I would recommend they never do another <laughs> listing again. Um, I think it's the one Colin or Andrew sent in our group chat oh, God. earlier today. Absolutely. Yeah, they had Luka 1, Luka 1, and Jokic 1, Luka 2, Shea 3, Giannis 4. That's fine, whatever. Anthony Edwards 5. This is where you start to lose me. Yeah. Jalen Brunson 6, Jason Tatum 7, Jalen Brown 8. 89, 10 LeBron, 11 Sabonis, 12 Durant, 13 Siakam, 14. Fifth, this had to Rudy be the Gobert. This ha- Gobert? 16 Steph, 17 Halley, 18 Fox, 19 Embiid, and 20 Kwai. Like that, like, unless you're factoring in like availability, there's no argument for Joel to be below 19th. Demontis Sabonis. What like, like it, uh-huh. we met, we both mentioned it. Embiid was going to win the MVP award. That was like yeah. clear as day until he got hurt. And you put him below Rudy Gobert. It's like absolutely unacceptable. <laughs> That's after Gobert just got <laughs> shook out of his shoes by Luca, by oh. Derek Lively, <laughs> by Derek Lively, oh my God. <laughs> the rookie. <laughs> but he needs to put down the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Jesus Christ. All right. That was top 10 players in the league. And with that, that is episode 36 of the Coconut Curry podcast. If you listen this far, please like, comment, subscribe. It helps us out a lot. And other than that, we'll see you next time.